What's up everyone? Welcome back to another incredible, beautiful, stunning day here in Japan. It's it's just like the perfect weather. It's a bit too hot, but uh, today we're adding a new tank to the fish room. Today we'll be getting a tank for this section right here, the four footer. This is a rack that I built. You can see up above we've got a four foot tank and we're going to be getting the same exact tank for this area right here. This tank up above is a planted tank. You can see gravel, thick gravel substrate, a bunch of plants. We're still going to add more plants into this tank. There's no hardscape at all. But on the bottom, the tank that we're, we'll be getting today is going to be kind of the opposite. It's going to be a rock only scape. So only rocks, no plants at all and we're going to have sand. And the fish that I plan to keep in that tank are going to be African cichlids. I love African cichlids because that's the, kind, that's the fish that brought me into this hobby. Many years ago when I was in school, high school, uh, my teacher had, my science teacher had an African cichlid tank, a four foot tank, and there were a bunch of rocks in there, a lot of colorful cichlids, African cichlids, and in those little crevices in the rocks, you'd see like baby fish, the babies, of the African cichlids swimming around and it was just I don't know why but it was such a nice thing to see I, I really love that tank and that's kind of what got me excited about this hobby so today we're going to kind of be creating something like that so I'm going to kind of prepare this area right now there's not much I need to do except uh, get these sponge filters out of the way aquarium co-op thanks again so much for these sponge filters they're amazing I'm using them in almost all my tanks on this side of the fish room you can kind of see you can see the rainbow fish tank, the breeding colony. Yeah, we've got the sponge filters almost everywhere. So, uh, amazing stuff. But today we're going to need to sort, find another place to put them. But now we've got this space opened up. I think it's time we shall get the tank for this area right here. It's kind of exciting, also kind of nervous getting a new tank. All right, I've made it back. I'm sorry I couldn't film much outside at the fish stores. J Japanese fish stores are kind of strict when it comes to filming. So uh, we've got the tank inside the car as well as some other stuff. Take a look. So first of all, we've got the four foot tank. It fits, just fits in the car. Like if I move the seat down, it'll fit easier. We've also got some gravel this gravel was super cheap a dollar a bag and i got five of these bags so that was really nice and uh, i'll show you the other stuff when we get inside all right so exciting stuff let's take a look at what i just got just now uh so i kind of went on a shopping spree to be honest and it's not really that fun spending all this money on aquarium stuff but it is fun when you get to set it up. So let's take a look. First of all, I, I bought the tank. This tank, 120 centimeters, four foot tank, same exact size as the one up here. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the first thing. We got the tank. Then next up, I got this airline tubing. This is silicon tubing, very flexible, like rubbery type, and it, it doesn't get hard over time. So this is some cool stuff. It's the type I'm using on all the tanks in this section of the fish room. All the sponge filters that I showed you earlier, uh, you can see up there as well. It's all this uh, silicon tubing. So I got five meters of that. Then over here, this is something cool I've never seen before. It's a light rack and I got these for four dollars each, which, well under four dollars actually. So I just couldn't pass up on this. Uh, they don't make these anymore. It's from a brand called Nisso and you can see it's a light rack or a light stand as I call it. And you can kind of see right there, it's this plastic thing right here, so you can raise the light up. Um, if you've got a light like this, you can see it's quite low to the tank. There's not much space in between the tank and the light. So if you just put this on, you'll be able to raise the tank, the light up a, a couple centimeters. So pretty cool thing, and I'm excited to try this out soon. And then I also got some air stones. This right here is I think it's called the Never Clog Airstone. I'm not entirely sure, but it's like 50, 60 cents, uh, 60 yen, which is around 50, 60 cents. So yeah, uh, pretty nice. I'll be using these in my sponge filters, the aquarium called sponge filters. So I got a couple of those and then we got the sand. So this right here is called Platinum Reef Sand. And you can see there's uh, saltwater fish, African cichlids, and we'll be using this 
in this tank right here for the African cichlids. So I got a couple bags of the sand right here. And then we got the dollar gravel. Uh, this gravel is used gravel, so I'm not entirely sure like what fish were kept with this gravel in the past before. I don't know if there were any diseases in that tank, so it is kind of risky getting used gravel, but yeah, I think it should be okay. It looks like it's dried out well and it shouldn't have, it shouldn't give me any problems, but I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever uh, bought uh, used gravel or sand before and let me know your, what your experience was and then finally I got these for free these I was super lucky uh, aqua journals from quite a while back ago these used to cost five dollars five hundred yen a book and you can kind of see it's um I got quite a number of them for free so I just want to thank the store who gave these to me there's a number of them and it's a uh, yeah, it looks really exciting. I'll be having a fun time going through each one of these. Alright, so with everything out of the way, we can now focus a little bit on this tank. Start prepping it for the African cichlids that we'll be putting in soon in the future. But today, I just want to get this tank all like ready for when I start scaping it. I don't know if I'll, I'll start scaping it today. I'll show you guys the rocks that we'll put we'll be putting in here and maybe play around with some rocks and show you guys what I'm thinking of, of doing. Um, but for now, uh, we're going to put a background on this tank, a background sticker, not really a 3D background. I, I'm not a huge fan of those things. I have seen some really nice 3D backgrounds in the past, but here in Japan, I haven't seen much of that and I haven't seen any that I'd be like really interested in using. So for this tank, we're going to go with a classic black color background just like we have up here. And the fish that we'll be putting in here are colorful, colorful, vibrant fish. So having a black background will really make those fish uh, stand out. And also the tanks in this fish room are mostly black colored background tanks. So I think it'll just match the whole fish room better. However, for a nature style tank, I've said this in the past before, but something like this, uh, a planted nature style aquarium that high tech, I'm, I'm not so sure what I'm even saying, but for a tank like this, I think a blue white gradation background is really nice. Or if you can't get one of these, then a plain white background will also look amazing. It just kind of um, gives more depth to the tank. So you see many aquascapes now, modern aquascapes uh, nowadays use bright colored backgrounds, white or white and blue, or even like now you're, you're having light screens that have RGB mode. You can do like a sunset background or a purple background, uh, but I like the classic blue and white or the white. Uh, but for today, we're going to go with a black background. And I currently don't have any with me right now, so I'm going to have to head out to the home center to get some of that black sticker paper. You can go on Amazon. I have a link to it in the description down below for those sticker paper types of stuff. You can get like different colors, black, white, frosted, uh, but yeah. I'll see you guys at the home center. Okay, so here I've got the black sticker paper. It's the same exact thing that's on all my other tanks in the fish room. Uh, so let's go and stick this thing on this tank. And take a look at that right there. We've got the background on. I think it looks amazing. Even without anything inside, with a black background, the tank just looks great. Now, while I was at the home center, you may have seen that I picked up this blue styrofoam board. What that is, is it's insulation styrofoam. It's a hard styrofoam board. And this is going to be for the bottom section of the aquarium. We're gonna cut this up and put it on the bottom of the aquarium and we're going to have rocks sitting on top of it. It's going to be a protection layer. But if I was in a different country, I'd probably use what's called, what's known as egg crate or lighting diffuser. But here in Japan, I've been searching everywhere for that and I can't seem to find egg crates. Uh, so this is the next best option. And I'll show you guys the rocks that we'll be putting into this tank. 
So just outside, I've already got a small amount selected right over here. These are the rocks that I'll be using for the African Cichlid Aquascape. You can see this is the biggest piece of rock and it's really, really heavy. I found this in the garden and, well not this one, I found some of the smaller ones in the garden and this big one as well as this one right here, these two were from a rock yard. I was walking through a rock yard and I asked the owner um, how much these rocks were and he's like, oh you can take them, just take them. So I got these rocks for free and we're going to use them for the African Cichlid Aquascape. So yeah, these are the rocks we'll be using. You can see I've kind of been like playing around with the aquascape, uh, seeing what I want to do and yeah, just playing around. So let's let's bring some of these rocks in and see if they'll even fit in the tank. So you can see I've cut out a piece of the styrofoam. Uh, this will just help uh, support the heavy rocks so that we don't have to put all the weight onto one point of the glass because uh, this glass is not the thickest glass there is so um, I want to protect it as best as I can. So we'll put this piece. This is just a little like testing demonstration. It's not a full on aquascape. I'm just playing around with some of the rocks. This here is the biggest rock. It's got to be at least uh, 10 kilos. Now this is probably not the ideal way to escape this tank. It would probably be much better to pull this tank forward so that I have more room to play with. Uh, because right here, this tank being under this rack on the lower part of the rack, I've only got about 15 to 20 centimeters here to put the rock in and out and it's pretty challenging. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do when the time comes to actually escape this tank for real, but I think we'll be able to make something happen. So we've got the tank, we've got the rocks, we've got the styrofoam underneath, we've got the background, we've got some sand here, uh, three bags of it which I don't think is enough. So there's still a couple things I need to get for this build in order to complete it. First of all, we'll probably need a few more bags of sand. I got all that there was in the store so I'm probably going to have to find a couple more. But also we're going to need a filter. For filtration I'm thinking about going with the Eheim 2217 canister filter. I'm currently running it on this tank right here, the four foot rainbow fish planted tank and it's doing a great job. Uh, so we're probably going to get one more, stick it underneath the one we've currently got and run it for the African cichlid tank. I think it'll be just enough because we're not going to be overstocking this tank. We're just going to have a few fish in there. Well, maybe more than a few fish, but it's probably going to be okay. And then we're going to need the lights. The lighting, I'm not so sure what I'm planning to use yet, but I'm thinking of maybe going for floodlights, one here and one there. Just having two floodlights to light this tank up. Uh, let me know what you guys think about lighting. I'm still not too sure what I'm going to do. Or I could just use the spare light that I've got on this tank because I'm only running one of this right now so I can use the other one. I'm so excited to get this tank all set up. I'm not sure when it's gonna happen but it's definitely gonna happen soon so make sure you watch out for that video and I can't wait to get the fish swimming in this tank. It's gonna be so amazing watching all those colorful vibrant fish swimming in here. It's gonna be like a dream come true but as always I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did be sure to give a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next time.